Doctor, we've talked about inflammation being a root cause of actually many different things. Where does that start from? What, what causes inflammation that in turn leads to many other Life. conditions? Life causes inflammation. I mean, it does, right? The second law of thermodynamics is everything dissolves and decays. And that's a law of physics. It's the second law of thermodynamics. Mountains turn to dust, iron turns to rust. Everything decays all of the time. The same thing is happening in the human body. Interestingly enough, the human body has uh, a police department, which is the immune system. It also has a fire department, which nobody talks about which is the body's ability to put out the fires of inflammation, which are a normal part of life. So for instance, you walk down the street and you breathe in carbon monoxide from an automobile exhaust. Carbon monoxide goes into the body and creates the formation of something in the body called a free radical. A free radical is an oxygen atom that's lost an electron. And an oxygen atom that's lost an electron will stick to anything. It's like metabolic Velcro. Now, when enough oxygen atoms stick to something, whatever it got stuck to becomes oxidized. And when something becomes oxidized, it ultimately becomes destroyed, right? That's why iron turns to rust. So oxidative damage inside the body is the main causative factor of inflammation. Now, if the body is properly neutrified, it can handle normal oxidative stress that's present just from walking down the street. But if the body is not neutrified, you know, it's like the hook and ladder truck showing up at the house that's on fire, and it hooks the hose up to the hydrant, but there's no water in the hydrant. Well, if there's no water, you can't put the fire out. If the body is out of essential nutrients, the fire department can't work. So the normal inflammation that's just a part of day-to-day -day life gets the upper hand. So there's two things that are necessary. In, in this domain, in this regard, right? We have to support the fire department of the body. And we do that with 90 essential nutrients, especially selenium. Selenium is extremely important. And the whole concept of nutritive antioxidants, right? This is the, the domain of antioxidants. Antioxidants are like the water that the fire department uses. This is why consuming food uh, and beverages or nutritional supplements that are high in antioxidants is extremely important for you know, health of the human body. But in addition to giving the fire department of the body the raw materials that it needs to work, we also would be, it would be prudent for us to take steps to avoid being exposed to things in the environment that cause inflammation and create free radicals. You know what the biggest cause of free radicals from our point of view is? Fried food and oil in a bottle. What's that? That's right, everybody's favorite, olive oil. Oil in a bottle, salad dressing, eventually will oxidize. And when you consume anything that's become oxidized, you have free radicals in your body. So eating salad is like loading up on free radicals. And if you fry a food, forget it. And it's interesting. If you look at a map of life expectancy in the United States, right? Life expectancy, county by county in the entire United States, the part of the country that has the lowest life expectancy, and it's dramatically so, is the Old South, the Old Confederate South. Why is that? They've got the same education, they've got the same water, they've got the same sewer, they've got the same drugs, they've got the same insurance, they've got the same hospitals. Everything is the same except one thing. In the South, fried food is a religion. They eat more fried food in the South than anywhere else in the United States, with the possible exception of Native American reservations around the country, which are also extremely high in fried food. When you go overboard with fried food, you load your body up on free radicals. Your body does not have the raw materials to put those fires out, and so your body decays faster. This is why people that live in the Confederate South have the lowest life expectancies of anybody in the U.S., and nobody is talking about it except us.